Good evening. Revolution Prep would like to welcome you to our the PSAT and beyond what you need to know about the PSAT, ACT, and every other standardized acronym you can possibly imagine. My name is Jacqueline Wilson, and I'd like to first thank Brian High School for having me here tonight. I'm very excited to be here. Parents, students, I know you have very busy lives and you have super busy schedules. Well, we're going to try to get you in and out and answer all your questions with this. And if you have any questions, hold them to the end and I will make sure that I get to each and every one of them. I'm not leaving until you're satisfied. First, I wanna go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Jacqueline Wilson, you can call me Jackie. I've been with SAT Prep since the fall of 2012. I have a bachelor's degree in sport administration, a master's degree in business administration, and I'm currently ABD, that's all but dissertation, on my PhD in sport management. I love teaching. I love education, I love learning. I'm that girl that comes up with the random silly quotes that fit almost any situation. That would be me. You can see here, I've been in school for a while. So currently to date, I have 17 international publications. I've got four years classroom experience at the university level, and then two full semesters with Revolution Prep in the high school classrooms. I was a student athlete, so my athletes in here don't worry, I'm talking to you too. I've been there, I've done that. I've worked both worlds, the student and the athlete. And finally, my favorite thing to say is that I have studied abroad. I have been to Egypt, Canada, Australia, and almost all 50 states for different academic functions, different athletic functions, anything that has to do with school, academia, learning, education, I'm in it to win it. Those are my favorite things to do. So when I got the opportunity to teach with Revolution Prep and be a spokesperson for their program, I thought, wow, how much better could it get? What we're going to cover tonight isn't all about me, I promise, even though I'm pretty fun to talk about. Okay, I promise, it'll be good. We're going to talk about why does testing matter? What are these acronyms? And why do we even need to know what they're here for? Okay, we're going to talk about interpreting those results, not just sheets of paper with numbers on them. We can use those and we can see where we are and where we need to be. We can see where we're going from the PSAT to the SAT. There's some similar letters in there. We can use those, okay? The ACT and beyond. What is the ACT? Is it an acting test? Do we have to learn Shakespeare? Absolutely not. But it's a little different than that PSAT and SAT test. And finally, what are those next steps? What's that testing timeline and how is this gonna work for you? How can Revolution Prep help you get to where you need to go. So, <clears throat> moving on. Why does testing even matter? Oh my goodness, how many times do you sit in that room and you think, why am I taking this test? It's miserable, it's long. There's one thing you can always count on. Those passages, they will be boring. Every time, they will be dense and they will be boring. But it's okay, because you need to know it. And you can get through it with the right training and the right practice. But why does it even matter? Why should you even have to sit through those tests? Well, I'll tell you this. Of those 8,000 hours you're gonna spend in school, if you were to devote 40 to 50 of them to SAT prep, you're gonna see an automatic boost in those PSAT, SAT scores. Now, here's the kicker. You're gonna spend 40 to 50 hours of those 8,000 that you're already putting in but what do colleges really look at? Do you think the colleges are really looking at those 8,000, even though it's the biggest number? No. What they're really looking at is your standardized testing. Colleges, universities all across the country are looking at whatever your standardized test score is. It's the one mean that they can look at across every student. Who did the best? Who do we want to accept? That is the easiest way to increase your chances for admission any university throughout the entire country. Now, you're a student athlete. You've got to balance some things. You've got to work towards those athletics, but you've got to have a good standardized test score in order to get where you need to go. If you are the one who wants to go to MIT, you've got to have that top level score. Even though your transcript will look good, your community service is going to look great. I know it. You all look like the community service type. Okay? You've got all these other pieces. But that one bit, that standardized test score, is the surefire way to boost 
your application into any university that you want to work towards. So what is the PSAT? How do I even get a score? What do I even look at? I don't even know. Now, I promise, it's not that bad. Not going to kill you. The PSAT is the practice version of your SAT. We have the full SAT, which is the big test. We're going to give you a little practice test, okay? It's for sophomores. So can I see a show of hands in here? Freshmen? Sophomores? All right. Juniors? No seniors? Good. That's good. They're moving on already. See, they already suffered through it and they beat it. Now, sophomores, this is your first exposure. This is where you're first going to learn what this is. What you're going to do with it, where you're going to go. Okay? Juniors, this is your chance with the PSAT to qualify for that National Merit Scholarship Program. Everyone wants that National Merit. You get up there, you study, you ace that PSAT. That's where you can use these scores to qualify. Okay? For everyone, this is to put where you stand in a real perspective. Okay? We're going to line everybody up in one big line based on score, and this is going to be your spot. Okay? It's not that bad, I promise. Somebody might on either side of you might smell a little, but it's okay. You'll be fine. Okay? So the PSAT. Not miserable. Totally doable. It's only two hours and ten minutes. That's doable. That's like two episodes of Law & Order back-to-back. -back with like an extra commercial break where you hit the TiVo and you hit pause. No big deal. You can do that. Not a problem, right? Okay? All it means is that you need some endurance. And if you can get through endurance on watching two hours of MTV, you can get through endurance taking two hours of testing, right? Not a big deal, not a big deal. So here we've got all these sections and they look all colorful here. It's not that bad, all right? We've got a 30 minute writing section, short, sure, it's a prompt. I'm gonna give you that information, okay? You've got your critical reading, just like it says, reading. And we'll do math, more critical reading, and more math. Each section is laid out this way. When you take that PSAT, there's a proctor. They'll tell you how long you have to take. You don't have to guess at how long have I been testing. Oh, no, I'm 18 minutes in. Oh, no. No, no. There's going to be a proctor. It'll be structured. They'll tell you when you need to stop. It's okay. They understand that you're there and you're nervous and you're testing. They're going to make this as easy for you as they can. Okay? The test as a whole, not that bad. Remember, it's the endurance factor that you need. Okay? If you can get tired, if you don't get tired, excuse me, if you don't get tired halfway through, you're going strong. You get through that first hour, boom, done, keep it going, okay? And that's like it for any standardized test. There's always going to be this long chunk of time, and it's all falling back to you and your endurance. So, what happens? You finish the test, you're waiting, you're waiting, and you're excited, and the mail comes. Oh my goodness, the mail comes. I get so excited when the mailman shows up. We go out, we open the mailbox, we get it out. Oh my goodness, I have numbers on sheets of paper. I don't know what they mean. No, not that bad, I promise. Right here, this is what we're going to explain, okay? Easy stuff, easy stuff. So, in each section, you have a breakdown between... It's up to 80 points for each section. So we've got the critical reading, the math, and the writing. It's up to 80 points. So we can score that total of 240. Okay? So anywhere between 20 and 80. And we're going to get that 240 total. Now, what this is telling you is that you are in what percentile? This, we're going to look at our little shaded people. Here, we're looking at the percentile. You scored higher, this is our sample student, you scored higher than 33% of juniors. There you go. Perfect. Up there, we've got a 50. So you've got 50 out of 80. Okay? 50 out of 80. And then here, 52. There, 44. Perfect. So we see that it's a score. It's a score range and a percentile. So it's all there. Everything you need to use is going to be there. But the interesting part is when you look at this. The National Merit. Scholarship Corporation is going to give you that National Merit Score. So, you can see that on our last one, we have 146. This is our sample guy. 146. So, 146, okay, that's going to be in the 47th percentile. Now, what you really want to know 
is of that 146, what does that mean for the SAT? Well, here's our little trick for you. Add a zero. All of a sudden, you got a 1460. That's how your PSAT score projects onto the SAT. Now, if you go and take the SAT, you're going to get an exact 1460? Probably not. But you can give, use that as a benchmark. You'll be right around there. Okay? So it's out of the 240, and you can add that zero. Those are two great little tips that you can use to further that information that you have. Also included on that cool little school report that you all waited for. I know you did. Don't tell me you didn't. I know you did. Okay? Was your skills breakdown. Okay? This is going to tell you your phrases and clauses. This is going to tell you which questions you aced, which questions hated you, and which passages bored you to tears. No, they didn't actually put your tears on here. It's going to be like a little puddle. No, no, no. But really. This is giving you your breakdowns. So you can assess your strengths and your weaknesses. And what we like to say in business, you can look at your SWOT. Your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. What's going to get you? And how can you get back at this test? With Revolution Prep, we look at this. We analyze where you are. We analyze where you want to go. And we make sure that we can use your strengths to further your education, to make sure that you end up where you need to be. This also gives you a question by question breakdown. Question by question, oh my goodness, because I know when you walked out of there, you thought to yourself, question 12, section two, made me want to cry. It was horrible. I wanted to quit the test right then and there. There was one question. You know what's great? Look up here, question 12, oh my goodness, it may have stressed you out, you've got it That's exciting, because it means that you know exactly what you're talking and you can put it onto paper. This is a great way for you to look at what you've done, what questions stressed you out and worried you, and then you can come back and look and see where you made your mistake. Did you round up instead of rounding down? Did you pick the wrong adverb? Did you pick the wrong noun? Did you pick something that isn't right and is it fixable? Yes, absolutely. If you know how you got it wrong, then you know that you can make it right. So, moving on from the PSAT to the SAT. It's 95% the same content. You can do one, you can do the other. Same language. We didn't change it. We didn't start the PSATs in English, the SATs in German now. We didn't do that. It's all English, all the same content. Okay? The only difference. SAT is slightly harder. It is. And it is longer. Okay? About four hours. Three hours and 45 minutes to be exact. It's rough, but again, endurance. You train for it, you can do it. Just like athletes, you don't automatically run out and run five miles. You train to get to five miles. And there is an essay, okay? So whereas the writing on the PSAT isn't actually writing the essay, we're gonna give you little bits and pieces of writings. Here it actually is an essay, but they give you the prompt and they're able to fall back and give you a full out essay. Okay, so we give you this prompt, lovely, wonderful, fantastic, and you read an essay about it. With Revolution Prep, we even give you a breakdown on exactly what those SAT graders are looking for in those essays. All right, so I promise, really not that bad. Only key to this one is it is longer. That is where the training comes in. That is where the endurance comes in, and that's why Revolution Prep has set up a program where you do train for this test. You're training every weekend, every week, to set yourself up to get to this point so that you can walk in and ace that SAT. 